That's good. Speak. Speak. There, watch. Because Zanel's going to get a cold sensor, which he has to do. All right. Glasses or no? Um, if you want to. I think it's as smooth as I am. Smoother than I am, however. All right. So when people come in, you're going to see. I'm waiting to pop up on the over here. Can I just let him in? Yeah. Okay. Um, Caitlin needs to bring a chair. She's going to come because. You want her off camera or on camera? Yeah. Um, the light isn't good here. No. So then you want to grab a lamp from somewhere to put over here. Okay. I have four minutes. It's recording it. What? It's recording it. Did you find me a lamp? You got three minutes. Where do you want the lamp? Um, I'm not sure where it's going to be the best light. No, that sucks too. Turn on the overheads. Both of them. How's that? Bright. I don't feel like I'm reading bright. I feel like it's dark. You're dark. No, I think it's not bright. It's better without that. Does it? No, it does. Okay, so move the lamp out of the shop. Well, obviously. Um, Caitlin, bring a chair so you're here, but not oh, in view. Thank you so much. It still looks dark, Noah. Why are you going over there? Over there? Yeah. Wait, did you just swing your chair over there? But no, it says it needs to be on eye level. Yeah, it does. I'm going to get you something. But I'm... We have one minute. <laughs> no, I'll get something for your mother. What? Put the computer on because it's brighter over here because of the natural light. Do you like that better? Yeah, that's fine, but I need to give me my um, notes. You got one minute. I can tell you someone to stick it. That's a good opening line. Mm -hmm. So do you think that's better or no? I don't know. I still look, I look dark to me. You're black. I know, but. comes a joke. It needs to be about this height. If it's that height, then. What do you need? You want it on the fax machine? Put it here. Put it on top of the books. Okay. I know I'm going to move that in front of you. You can push it forward some. Okay. No, it's 
You're a little lower. I look like a midget. Take more. Okay. It's two. What do I do? I just go on and start talking. Was there somebody there or not? Because they're recording it. Does she go on and start talking if no one's there? Because they're recording it? I know. I think I will. Um, where is your phone? So go ahead, go on. Where's the lamp? Where's it? Oh, what you do with the lamp? Oh, I threw that. Glasses on or off? Does it help for reading? It looks good. Either. No, I can read just fine. Okay. I just thought it made me look smarter. <laughs> it looks right either way. Plug it in there. Take out the heater. Noah, how do I start? Just start. I just start. It's recording, so. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Good afternoon. I am Jean Bacon, Dr. Jean Bacon. I have a PhD in social worker, and I'm here to speak to you today about the resilience and the wake of uncertainty. We currently live in times that are very challenging. There are issues of social injustice, personal adver adversity, and we have the global pandemic that is leading people to feel very stressed and at disease or unrest. So I'd like to start by talking about what does it mean to be resilient? We've all heard the term used for many individuals that survive all kinds of events. But what does it mean? Resilience in its essence is the ability to bounce back when life events do not live up to our expectations. It can reduce the pre-existing mental health conditions that used to work to offer support. Resilience can help fight off and manage depression, anxiety, and improve our overall mental health. We've all heard of incidents and stories of people that have survived terrible trauma and heart-wrenching events. And sometimes we question ourselves, wow, if they could get through that, what's wrong with me? What I'm facing is so trivial compared to what someone else that we read about in the news or watch on the newspaper that they have survived. How'd they do that? How they were able to do that is because of resilience. that has allowed them to get through. Resilience empowers individuals to accept and adapt to situations. It allows them to get through, to thrive and to succeed despite situations that one would expect would break them that will cause them to fall to their knees because of the stress and the weight of the pain. There is not a predisposition genetically to being resilient. We understand that. But there are several factors that appear to increase one's ability to be resilient. The first one is a positive attitude. You know those sunny people that it's pouring down raining and they wish you a good day and you could tell that it's genuine and from their souls and their hearts. Or the person that says, you know, things are really bad, but 
They could be worse. That's a positive attitude. That's optimism. The belief that I just got to get through this, but today it's going to be hard. But you know what? There's a chance that tomorrow is going to be a better day. So that optimism is so helpful in building and maintaining resilience. Another characteristic that helps with resilience is having the ability to regulate our emotions. Having the ability to control our emotional responses to stress and psychological pain. There are some medical issues that can get in the way of our ability to regulate our emotions. One such is thyroid disorder. The thyroid controls the mood. And so if we have a distinct function of the thyroid, that can make a huge difference in our inability to regulate our mood. So there are often medical precursors that get in the way of our ability to be resilient. Another way, another characteristic that helps us be resilient is to view failure as a form of helpful feedback. Now, people say that all the time. Oh, well, I learned from it. It was a learning opportunity. Yes, it was horrible, but I got something out of it. Some people actually believe that the challenges that they face in life are all lessons in preparation for a day in the future. That somehow the bad things and the turmoil that they experience in life leads them to know how to be better at it when it hits in the future. And it will hit in the future. We know that in order to appreciate the sunny days, we have to have rain. There has to be hills and valleys. And so we know that if we build upon the difficult circumstances and survive and thrive in them, eventually it's gonna be a better day. But turmoil will come again as much as we wish it didn't. There are also environmental factors that aid in building and maintaining our, resist our resilience. One of those is the memory of past events that we've survived. The memory that in the past, I got through something that was even worse than what I'm surviving today. And I'm here and I'm standing. And was it hard? Yes. But I had that historical recall that I got through it okay. And that's going to help us go forward. Just the knowledge that we survived adversity in the past. So we understand what resilience is. And we understand that we've survived it before. But what is going to help us cope with crisis and improve our resilience for the long haul? Not talking about just in the moment, but for the long haul. What's going to do it for us? The first thing is, to produce healthy habits. Healthy habits that include eating, getting adequate sleep, and exercising. At a later date, we are going to talk about the importance of sleep and boistering and supporting our ability to cope. Sleep is very important. We understand that Depriving people of sleep is a form of torture. The body and the brain both shut down and don't work at an optimal level when we do not get proper rest. So it's not just sleep that's important. It's also rest, periods 
at ease. Eating a healthy diet is so important. You know when you have that pasta at lunch and right after that, you want to go to sleep. <laughs> you don't want to do cartwheels. You don't want to finish your day. You want to nap. <laughs> so we understand the mind, body, and food connection. So what we put in our body, we get out. Exercising is so important to help control depression and anxiety. Being physically active allows us to make positive endorphins that assist us in warding away the downs, the depression, the anxiety, the nervousness. So really, it's a combination of the things we do for our body and our mind that will allow us to cope better. Another asset in helping us cope through adversity is to nurture close relationships. To, we talk a lot about who is in your network of support. Who is in your network of support? Who aids you? Who eases your comfort and discomfort? Who's at the other end of the phone or the text or the computer when we have periods of uncertainty? These close relationships are crucial to good mental health. That when we're going through things, there's someone that we have that we can rely on to help support us. Someone that can listen and try to understand our experiences. So very important. And coupled with that is self-care, especially you ladies out there. We are experts in taking care of everybody else. You know, the shoemakers, kids have no shoes. You heard that saying, right? We are so good at feeding the sick and the hungry, mending clothes for children and adults who have holes in them. We are so good at offering a loving and a soft voice to those in need. But you know what happens? When we try to give it to ourselves, there's a voice in our head saying, oh, you're just being selfish. Oh, you don't need that. Somebody else needs that time with you. can help somebody else out. Kindness is free. I'm sure you've heard all of those sayings. And we forget to turn that loving voice inward. It's not selfishness. It's self-care. It's loving yourself as much as you love others, if not more. Lately, we've talked about the phrase to death. If you're in an airplane and you lose oxygen, put the mask on yourself first. Because if you don't, what happens? You can't help anybody else. So think about what do I do to nurture and sustain myself? It's important. It's important to keep that at the forefront. Another thing that's going to aid you in coping and being resilient is to accept the things that you cannot change. And to take responsibility for the things that you can. 
it's so very important because we get caught up in all the things that we can't do one thing to change if only but you have to build your resilience by taking charge of the things that are in your control and leaving the things that are out of your control out of the way. Push them aside. Nothing you can do about them. As long as you are being your best and genuine self and controlling what is in your control, your resilience will only be strengthened. your resilience is going to be that much more intense. When you let go of all the things that you have absolutely no power to control. So in building your resilience, you gotta work on that. So there are seven C's to resilience building learning, seven things for you to work on. One of them is personal competence. We all have things that we do well, special things that not everybody can do. So in building your resilience, you need to support your confidence. You need to own and claim the traits that you possess that you have competency over. Another thing is your confidence. I know we've all heard it. Fake it till you make it. You may be nervous, you may be scared, but that doesn't mean that you can't show your confidence. It's the only way we're gonna build our resilience. We don't have to feel confident all the time, but we have to know our value and that's gonna help us own our confidence. Another thing is our connection. You don't have to know the answers to everything. You don't know how to have, have to know how to fix a million things. It's okay to connect to the people in our lives that may have the answer. Use your resources, whatever they are, to connect to people that can help you, people that are compassionate, people that have knowledge that maybe you haven't acquired yet. The connections are so very important in building our resilience and our ability to cope. The other thing is character. At the end of the day, when you're by yourself, do you know, can you answer truly that you used all the character that you possess to do your best? That genuinely you are working on being the person that you desire to be. It doesn't mean that you don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean that you don't fall short. It means that you're striving to be the best person that you can be. And that person changes day to day. Sometimes we are tired and worn out and our character can't be 100%, but that's okay because we are human and in our humanness, we are gonna fall short. But can we accept that on any given day, on any given moment, 
we have tried to be the best person that we can. Another of the seven C's leading to resilience is contribution. That we attempt to contribute all that we can to make our world a better place. That if there's something that we can do to brighten a day or aid another person that is in need, have we done that? Have we made a contribution to make things better? However small. We don't know what people are going through. Many of us have been trained to smile even if our hearts are broken. So by saying good morning, have a good day. Thank you. We don't know what we've done to contribute to lighten someone's load or even to make their day. It may seem like a simple thing to us, but we may have lifted the sun in the sky for someone else without even knowing. That's the contribution. Another thing that we can do to increase our resilience is to increase our ability to cope with whatever befalls us, whatever that is. To practice the skills that we need to handle what's on our plate. The other thing is control. Sometimes we have to give up control and let ourselves be vulnerable in order to gain and grow resilience. While at the same time accepting the control that we have over things is so very limited. It's limited. We work so hard making things, it's gonna run smooth, nothing is gonna go wrong, I got it. For those of you that have been on this earth for more than a minute, you know all the control that you try to exhibit can fall apart in a second. So resilience is the ability to accept the things that we can cope with and control and to leave the rest in someone else's hands. That's our humanity. So when we set goals for resilience, there's two things that we wanna do. We wanna help develop our willpower. So that means our ability to sustain trauma. We want to increase our ability to do that. That maybe right now I don't have the power I need to get through that, but I'm working on building it. I put some fertilizer in that garden and I am working on supporting and growing my willpower. The second is the opportunity to develop and execute an action plan. So trying not to get so overwhelmed by the task at hand trying to come up with a viable plan of how we're going to get to the other side of the dilemma. It's so very important. And so we have about six minutes to go in our discussion. And so I'm going to talk about ways to boost your resilience how to overcome the adversity that we're living with in these challenging days and time. One thing we wanna do is stay flexible. Adjust goals and find new ways to adapt. The second is to learn lessons focused on positive. Ask yourself, what can you do differently 
are better the next time. So that means you're going back to look at what has occurred and you're figuring it out so that next time when you're faced with adversity, you can do something different that leads to a better outcome. The next thing is to take action. Think about what you can do and do it. Some of us get so overwhelmed that it's hard for us to think straight about the issue. So if we can find a quiet space, a place with music, a place to meditate, then we can think about the action that we need to take and how to do it better. When we're struggling, we tend to isolate. We become ashamed, embarrassed. We don't want others to know that we're struggling. That is so counterproductive to what we need to do. We need to connect to as many people as possible, not withdraw. We need to open the door and let people in so that they can support us. Another thing that we need to do is to release tension through outlets that allow us to express ourselves. If you write poetry, write poetry. If you read poetry, read poetry. If going for a walk helps you, go for that walk. Release the emotional stress. With that, have a sense of purpose. Bring meaning to your life. Why am I here? I am here to enrich the lives of others. So in that belief, I have to believe in myself. And I have to believe that I have a purpose that is bigger than myself. And that may be for you to help others. Another thing that you can keep doing is laughing. Laughing is such good medicine. Laugh at yourself. I got so overwhelmed with this issue, I couldn't find my resilience anywhere. I just froze. And then when I thought about it, I thought, you silly girl, <laughs> what are you doing? You can do better than that. Think about the times you did better than that. Keep laughing as much as you can. And while you're laughing, you wanna disband the negative thoughts. You wanna fight against destructive self-beliefs. You wanna look at the positives that you have faced despite set setbacks. You want to rely on your spiritual beliefs and values. You want to calm and focus yourself emotionally you want to get physical health. You want to have mental strength where you believe in what you're capable of doing. You want to let go of a sense that you can control everything because it is beyond your control. I so enjoyed having this conversation with you about resilience in the wake of uncertainty. The world from social injustice, personal adversity, and the global pandemic. I believe that you have some solid skills to help you through this. I wish you all a fabulous day as you journey to face things that are difficult. Build the resilience, do the things that allow you to shine despite challenge. Wishing you all a good day, a happy week, and much success in all challenges that you face. Be well.